Here's one of my recent articles, and I'll send you the link to this in the email that I send, so that way you don't have to worry about finding it. Not that you need to go out and get it, but um, just so I can sort of illustrate to you some of these things. Now, obviously this is an article, so it's going to be a much more condensed version of what it is you're doing. Um, I was trying to accomplish in less than a thousand words what you're trying to do in 20 pages. Um, but So this is the literature review of, of the article here. and. Um, I'll just scroll back up to the top so you can get a sense as to what the article is about. So it's called Real-Time Virtual Teaching, Lessons Learned from a Case Study in a uh, Rural School. And as you can tell from the abstract here, what it's focusing upon, it's focusing upon the synchronous or real-time instruction. So if you were using a virtual classroom kind of environment, uh, like Adobe Connect or um, Illuminate or Collaborate or Zoom or any of those other um, online tools that you would have even a you know you could use like a Google Classroom um, you know the synchronous tools with the video and the audio and that kind of thing so that's what we were looking at here is how teachers do that um, so when you move down to the literature review um, you can see for example I'm you know I start off by trying to make a number of points about the literature itself in this area you know so I'll make a statement like there is a growing body of literature related to teaching in the K-12 online environment and then I list off a whole whack of people that have written about that um, you know and then I mentioned there are even some untested national standards related to teaching that have been adopted by some states and you know I list off you know here's the citations for the actual um, standards themselves and this particular citation here is based upon um, this notion of be them being untested um, you know however the vast majority of online instruction occurs in an asynchronous environment kind of like what you have here uh, where you know what I'm doing and you're using it aren't happening at the same time so it's not in real time um, you know so it's it's delayed in, in that sense and you can see I put in a couple of citations to support that you know and I say in fact there are only two programs that have a strong synchronous component and I mentioned what they are, you know, the CDLI in Newfoundland and formerly Access Alabama in um, Access Distance Learning, sorry, in Alabama, and put in the citations for those. So that's sort of an introductory kind of paragraph for literature review where I'm kind of setting the context. In your case, that's kind of what your first paragraph or two of your literature review is going to look like when you provide that contextual information, that background to the literature and background to the topic, if you will. So it isn't until the second paragraph that I really get into the body of the, um, the piece. So if you look at this first, uh, this second paragraph here, this first sentence here is basically my topic sentence. So as the majority of K-12 online learning programs use a primarily asynchronous instructional model, there isn't a lot that's known about synchronous instruction. So there's not a lot known. There's a couple of things that are known, but not a lot that's known. Some of the things that are known, for example, these two people described the affordances and constraints that synchronous tools could be you know, used in a French course in terms of you know, student to teacher interaction, to student to student interaction, and student to content interaction. This person here did some research that looked at um, that indicated that the tools were useful for promoting speaking in a blended elementary French environment. But some of the issues were poor audio quality, time lag, and the student's preference to use the chat feature as opposed to the audio functions. Finally, these other two authors here found that teachers could exhibit their social presence using the audio functions in that kind of environment. Now, one of the shortcomings of this particular paragraph is you notice there's no conclusion sentence. There's no, you know, summary or transition sentence here. So, you know, I've basically told you what I'm going to talk about. You know, there's not a lot known about this, and I've given you three examples of some of the limits of what we know, but I don't tell you what the takeaway is. I also don't transition you to what's coming next. You know, so, and moving to this next paragraph now 
one of the shortcomings of this next paragraph is that I don't provide that topic sentence. So not only did I not provide a transition uh, sentence from this previous paragraph, but you'll notice this third paragraph here doesn't have a topic sentence. So that would be a paragraph that would be improved with a topic sentence. Um, but having said that, assuming you knew what I was talking about here, um, I actually go into some of the material. So as you can see, the first two sentences of this particular paragraph are focused upon an individual study. So again, I'm talking a little bit about the study. So in their study of transactional distance with CDLI teachers, these two people found this. They also found this. So I've got two specific sentences about the study. But then instead of talking about it more, you'll see that then I go into uh, taking apart some of their findings. So you know, their study was looking at transactional distance. Here's a couple of things they found. Now, let me tell you a little bit about transactional distance. So as you can see, I've got a sentence in here that talks a little bit about transactional distance and what that means. In my case, I've decided to cite that particular sentence because, you know, again, this is a literature review, so I'm trying to use the literature to move my reader forward. Um, you know, here's another specific um, study that I'm using, and you can see further Murphy and Rodriguez Meneras, um, I'm sorry, Men Zan Ayers, um, you know, found this particular thing. And you notice I actually have a specific quotation here, more learner-centered, facilitative forms of teaching. So I actually use the page reference. Um, you know, this same perception was also reported in this study. You know, conversely, which essentially means these folks here found something different. You know, one of the reasons for this difference might be and I'm citing another study here. And then here's a good example of that sort of summary sentence, um, you know, or that transition sentence. Um, in this case, it's a little of both because obviously up until this point, you know, these two paragraphs have been talking specifically about research with the CDLI. You know, so I can say that beyond the research into the CDLI and other Canadian jurisdictions, so that's sort of the summary, there has been little research into synchronous online teaching within North America. That's the transition because you'll notice in the very next paragraph, my topic sentence is outside of North America. So the fact that I say that there's very little research into this topic within North America beyond what I just told you about, that transitions you quite nicely to being able to say outside of North America, there's some stuff that's been going on. You know, so here's my topic sentence. Um, you know, outside of North America, there's been some stuff that's going on. For example, you know, and I basically just provide a single example here, this virtual learning network in New Zealand, and you'll note I have one, two, three, four, five different citations. So I don't necessarily need to go into each of those. Now, what I might do if I were writing this as a thesis study, so essentially if I had much more space, you know, this here would still be a good um, a good topic sentence. And then I might say something along the lines of, you know, New Zealand is one of those jurisdictions that do utilize synchronous instruction as a primarily, uh, primary or significant component for their online teaching. I could still cite these folks, but what I would likely do then is say, for example, and then I might tell you about the things that Barber and Bennett and Bennett and Barber found because they're both the same set of authors, so they might be talking about the same things. You know, then I might say, similarly, Roberts found these things or discussed these things. You know, so again, I'm trying to develop out the points in much the same way I was doing it up here, you know, where I told you that, you know, here's my topic sentence again. There's not a lot known about synchronous instruction, and I provide some specific examples of some of the few things that we know about synchronous instruction. And then you can see here's sort of my summary sentence, not just for this paragraph, but for the complete section. You know, however, beyond these general descriptions, there has also been a lack of international research into the synchronous instruction model in the K-12 online learning teaching environment.
or K-12 online teaching environment. So again, that's sort of how not only I just close, and that's a good example of a summary as opposed to a transition, because you can see there basically what I'm trying to you know, tell the readers after reading all this, you should agree with me that there's not a lot of research internationally about this kind of online teaching. Um, you know, so that's a, an example of sort of how you go about doing some of those things. And in particular with this last one, as I outlined, if I had more space, what I would do, because, you know, what I could do is I just use New Zealand as an example. I could have gone in and picked you know, I might have had a second paragraph on another jurisdiction, you know, so I might have began that paragraph with, you know, another international jurisdiction that uses synchronous instruction as a significant component for their online teaching is South Korea. And then I might tell you a little bit about what's going on in South Korea, you know, a sentence or two that gives you a little bit of context. And, you know, then I might start using the literature specifically to say, uh, you know, the online program in South Korea is one that's set up by the central government that was originally set up as a tutorial program and then have a citation there. Um, one of the things that happened was that um, students, regardless if they could afford private tutoring or not, were using this government form of free tutoring. Put a citation for that there. Um, because the teachers discovered that all of their students were using this free tutoring, they were actually able to assign these classes, you know, these topics, these lessons to the students to do at home um, through the national federally funded synchronous tutoring system. And then put another citation in there for that. What this allowed was classroom teachers were now able to focus upon other aspects of the instruction such as project-based learning and providing both remediation and enrichment because they didn't have to worry about covering the basic content that were the students had learned from the tutors themselves and then put another citation in there and then I could finish that particular paragraph which would now be two paragraphs that I had um, you know because again that example is very general in nature, much like my made-up example about New Zealand that I gave you. Um, you know, both of those examples, you know, however, beyond general, exam general descriptions, such as both of these examples I've provided, there still is a lack of international research into synchronous instruction model in the K-12 online teaching environment. Um, so hopefully that sort of helps you have, figure out how to develop uh, out some of these things. So as you're looking at your own work, one of the things to keep in mind is not necessarily do I have to get rid of all of these things or you know, do I have to move, you know, essentially start writing a lot more. In many cases, it's are there other authors that are making the same point that I can, instead of saying this particular study found this, you could say something like research has you know, also supported this and then find a different study, uh, a different citation, a different piece of literature that is making the same points. So in many cases, it's not necessarily, you know, you've got one annotation that follows another annotation that, okay, I need to go in and start mixing all of this up or I need to go in and start adding a lot more material. It's, you know, is there anything that I have in my literature that supports this unsighted um, sentence that I've got here that would break up this annotation? Um, and in a lot of cases, I think one of the things I had mentioned to you was in many cases, you know, you have this idea of, you know, where you're opining about something or where you're editorializing about something. You know, if there's a particular piece of literature that supports that editorial, stick that citation in there and that will essentially break up the annotation so then it doesn't look like it's an annotation anymore because you know you're talking about a study by Smith 2011 and then you have an editorial statement but you're citing Jones 2006 there. Then you can go back and talk some more about Smith 2011 because you've broken up that conversation. Um, you've broken up that text so to the reader it no longer looks like an annotation. 